Hello and welcome to the Wine Dude, tasting as you go. So we're driving down these dirt back roads in Paso Robles, California. We come to a huge iron gate with a big G welded into the middle. Behind it are rows and rows of grapevines. We follow the road around the vineyard to a small room. First thing I noticed was a bigger than life-size Don Quixote inviting us in. That's where we met Len Gelfand, the owner and winemaker of Gelfand Vineyards. Len invites us in. The one thing we picked up on that there was no wine tasters here. Why? Because you have to be a Gelfand Wine Club member to visit the actual winery. That's what makes this podcast so cool. So join us as we dive into Gelfand Vineyards. Watch, learn, and listen as we discuss the copper top wines that are winning awards as soon as they are released. Let's go inside this wonderful private winery and join me, the wine dude, tasting as you go. Wine dude here. We're here with Lynn Galfin of Galfin Vineyards. How's it going, Lynn? I'm doing fine, how are you? Good, I'm hanging in there. This is a pretty interesting winery. You can't actually come to this winery. You have to go down to their tasting room in Paso Robles. But Len was nice enough to come here today and uh, do some tasting with us so we can see what his wines are. Take it away, Len. Well, I'm, I'm really glad you were able to make it down here. And, uh, well, let's start off right away, and why don't we talk a little bit about the vineyard if you want to. Sure, go right um, ahead. We started our vineyard back in uh, 2000 when we bought the property. When we did, there was absolutely nothing out here. It was just a rolling hill. So what we did is rip the ground, planted it. Actually, we planted it in 2001, planted it in four different grapes. We have uh, Petit Syrah, Syrah, Zen, and Cab. And from there, why don't we start uh, drinking a little bit, and then I'll tell you a little bit about uh, how we developed it. Okay. The four varietals, first one was our Zim. This is the first grape we actually harvested. We harvested this in, actually it came in in late August of uh, 2003. I call this our dessert wine, uh, dessert wine, our breakfast wine. And I call it our breakfast wine because to me, you can actually drink this one with Cheerios. <laughs> as you'll see. Here he is. Cheers. Cheers. And I say that uh, it's a breakfast wine because it's fairly light. It's not a heavy Zin, but it's developing into a really interesting one because it's got a great spice on the end of yeah, it. Yeah, that's very good. Is this pure Zin? It's pure Zin. <laughs> it's 100% Zin. Very good. Um, since it was uh, all brand new on uh, new vines, it's only two year old vines. It came off of. We put it on neutral oak, left it on oak for about 18 months before we uh, we bottled it. But uh, it's all fruit. What you're picking up is all all the fruit. There's no oak, no oak flavors that are coming through on this. But uh, again, it's really kind of smooth for Zinfandel. Very smooth, yeah. very drinkable, uh, real approachable. And like I said, you can drink this uh, in the morning. You can have this just about at any time. It would have been great for for Thanksgiving with the turkey. Okay, you guys heard it from Len. This is great with Cheerios. Great with Cheerios. Okay, well, in addition to the Zin, we also planted Cabernet. Let me give you a touch of the cap. Again, 03 cab, just off of two-year-old vines. Cab is not a uh, real heavy cab. Again, the 03 came out real light. Uh, in contrast, our 04 cab is just a killer. Oh yeah? The 04 cab we're gonna be releasing in about uh, four months. Okay. It's, it's in the bottle, ready, ready to be uh, labeled, and I wanna lay it down for another few months, but it is, it's gonna be incredible, that 04. Well, as soon as you have that ready, you let me know. I we'll, sure will. Well, we'll everyone's on... gonna know about that one. Right, I, right. I guarantee you that. We'll put it on the website too, at www.thewinedude.com and you'll be able to find out all the different information of the wineries that we're uh, interviewing for our mm -hmm. podcast. Mm. Ooh, that's good. But this is also developed, again, for a two-year-old two grape. It's got some really nice color already, and uh, developed really in there. nice. 
a lot of cherry in yeah. this one. So when did you release these? These were released uh, about uh, June of this year. This year being 05. So it's two years in the bottle? This is two years now. Yeah. Third grape we have was Syrah. I say was Syrah because there ain't no more. <laughs> uh, the Syrah we did about uh, 40 cases of and those 40 cases are, uh, are long gone now. They had some really nice write-ups on the Syrah from a number of different writers around, and the Syrah's all sold out. Wish, we wish we had some for you to try, but next year the Syrah's coming out again, incredible. Okay, Big well, we'll production. be ready. You're gonna taste some Syrah in a few minutes because one of the things I love doing are blends. Okay. And I've got one blend here that's 40% Syrah, so you get some, some feel as to what the Syrah was, but you can hold off on that okay. for a second. Okay, hey, you're the boss. Well, oh, sometimes, <laughs> not, not at home, but at least here. <laughs> and the fourth grape we have out here is Petit Syrah. And I think uh, at the end of the day, I hope this vineyard is gonna become known for its Petit. Okay. Because my Petit is coming out black as can be. Okay. As I pour this, I want you to see that this first pour is coming from only two-year-old grapes. The 04, again, which is incredible, is coming from three-year-old grapes, but this is the 03 from just two-year-old grapes which is coming out just incredibly dark. Yes, it is. To the floor <laughs> and to this wine. Mm. I like this one, Sean. Now this is just a leathery, earthy. Yeah, and it's got smooth. that smooth that on the back of the tongue there. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah, the petite, the petite here is gonna be an incredible grape for this. Uh, this vineyard. I like the color. And this color is light compared to what it's uh, going to be turning out to be. Yes, yes. yes. That was a great wine. Thank you. I really Thank like you. that one. I'm, I'm ready for your 04. Too bad we don't have it here. Well, if you really twist my arm, I might be able to pull one, one bottle I have in the, uh, the back room that isn't labeled yet. Oh, mm -hmm. just, I guess just, that's just the maybe hint, huh? we... Okay, all right. Just, all right, just, just right. maybe. Sounds good to me. Okay. But those are the four varietals that, uh, that we grow here and uh, that are all estate wines. I don't buy any grapes, don't sell any grapes. Everything we grow, we, uh, we make. We make. I make. Right. Yeah. I, we. I, me, I, that's right. You know. Yes. <laughs> you, yourself, and I? Or you, yourself, and you? You got it. All, th <laughs> all three of us. <laughs> cool. What was this, though? This wine, this wine, mm -hmm. and this. These three bottles are three blends that I've made out of the, uh, the grapes that we grow here. Tell me about this one first. This one is called Quixotic. Quixotic after Don Quixote. Don Quixote the dreamer, the dreamer. That's that's basically what this uh, this winery represents to me. That's great, man. And that's More all power this to you. And I and that's what this wine was named after, Don Quixote. Okay. Quixotic. We were fortunate that uh, we entered this wine in the Orange County Fair this year. It was our first wine, first attempt at it. It's a blend, basically, of uh, three of our grapes. It's one third Cabernet, one third Syrah, one third Petit Syrah. Sent it down there for the Orange County Fair. Won a bronze medal first year. All out. right, good God, job. We, we talk about an ego trip. That's, that's all this is. It, it, uh, it's, it's, it's an ego trip. It becomes a challenge uh, then after a while, huh? It's not. It's, it's an ego. That's all it is. It's an ego ride. Unfortunately, uh, three weeks later, the wine was sold out. Ugh. This is it. This is the last <laughs> bottle. And unfortunately, being the last bottle, we're not going to taste it today. <laughs> um, but this, this is what I want for my grandchildren somewhere <laughs> down the line. But uh, that, that's all. It, that's it. That's that's all that's left. But this is one of the blends. The second blend here uh, that we'll taste a little bit later is uh, called Menage a Bunch. Menage a Bunch. Menage a Bunch. Mm. The reason it's Menage a Bunch, it's a bunch of all four of our grapes. Ah. And, uh, That's not again, what I was thinking, but that'll work. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll taste this one. Well, <laughs> being that we're on camera, that's all you're going to hear about this one right now. I have a feeling there's a secret behind that. Mm, no, there's a secret behind the third one. Ah, okay. All right. Well, but we'll try this one first. 
Menage a bunch. Menage a bunch. Menage we did not get to try the Syrah, but this one is 40% Syrah. It's 40% Syrah, 20% Cab, 20% Zin, 20% Petite Syrah. Quite a blend. Mmm. That's very good. It has some some grab to it. Yeah, yeah. You get a lot of fruit in this one. That, that's coming through from the Syrah. A lot of people, especially in California, stay away from the blends. The only way we can label this in, in, in the United States is by calling it a red table wine. Okay. That's the only legal way you can do it. Red table wine to a lot of people signifies that it's a secondary wine. But unless it's 75% uh, of any single grape, you can't call it anything but a red table wine. You know what? I've tried a lot of what's called red table wine from different wineries. And, and it's like you drink and you, you're thinking one thing, right? And it's something different. You taste and go, this is great wine. What's it called? Red table wine. That's really? right. <laughs> I mean, you know. I know. It's, it's, it's such a misnomer in France. The greatest wines in the world, supposedly, if, if you think French wine is good. But in theory, <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> okay. Chateau Lafitte, the Margots, and, and those, the, all the first growths are all, quote, red table wines. Red table wines. They're all blends of five different grapes. Which is a great thing for, for our okay. podcast, for the wine dude, because it's just letting people know just because it's called red table wine, that doesn't mean it's bad. That's, that's just what they had to call it. That's right. So keep that in mind. So I love doing the different blends and, and playing around with the, uh, the blending. So anyway, this is a blend of our four grapes. It's, it's a very interesting blend. I, and the blends will change every year depending upon the taste. Great. It's like a, uh, it's like a puzzle, right? Exactly. <laughs> and the way I do the blending is, uh, is as follows. I get a bunch of uh, family members together. I get a bunch of our wine club members together. And we sit outside one day on a picnic table. I'll have a uh, hundred glasses out there. I'll have a bunch of uh, uh, pitchers with all of the different wines, and we'll start experimenting. And we'll take all day. That sounds And we'll funny. try a blend of 20% of this and 50% of that and 5% of this. And at the end of the day, we'll just start labeling which one we like the best and, and narrowing it down. And we'll go by vote. And everybody gets a vote. And I get 20 votes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very autocratic system. But that's how we come up with how, which blend we think is gonna be the best. That sounds like a great way to do it. And uh, th that's how we came up with this blend. And uh, we called it Menage a Bunch. And there'll be an 04 Menage a Bunch. The 04 Menage a Bunch will be a different blend than this, but it, uh, it's gonna carry on the same type of, of flavors as this one will. This, is, this one tastes like it's gonna be good with pizza. This one's gonna be good with everything. <laughs> pizza and prime rib. This is a good food food wine. Yeah, it is. And the last wine we have left, we call SFR. And that stands for? Well, I have to give you the story before I give you the name of what it stands for. Okay, I can deal with that. I want you to taste it first. And I want you to tell me what you think about it. And then I'll give you how it was named and why we named it that way. that one okay why do you like this one you can drink a lot of it I swear to God that is everybody says exactly the same thing this wine I, I I have it written down you have not seen the description you can drink anytime anywhere with with anybody it's, it's just an all-around great wine to drink it's got like a strong start but then it mellows out yeah so it's, it's just, just like even the women will like it and most women do. Mm -hmm. Most guys go for this blend. Most women go for this blend. Right. Because it's just a smooth all around drink. Yeah. This one's more bold. This one's more just smooth. Just a smooth, yeah, yeah. A smooth yeah. wine. 50% Petite Syrah. Mm. It's very good. Very it's good. 50% Petite Syrah, 20% Cab. Ten, it's only 10% Syrah, and then 20% um, of the fourth wine. <laughs> Which is? Of Zim. Zinfandel. <laughs> but uh, here's how we got to the naming of it. 
This was only done with my son and I. And we started in the morning like uh, all of the other blends. And we started going through the, all of the different variations. And again, we must have went, gone through, I don't know, 30, 40 different variations. Uh, I can see where this is going. <laughs> and by the time we were done, and we spent most of the day with all of the different blends, uh, we finally found that this was the right blend. And by the time we found the right blend, we knew exactly what the name was, SFR. Which is? Shitface Red. <laughs> Here, another toast to that. Shitface Red. <laughs> SFR. SFR. And a people, wine dude favorite. And you know, people love it. The first time we poured this wine, we poured it at the uh, Zinn Festival up here in Paso. And we never thought that any, any of the public would ever ask its name. So the first time uh, we poured it, somebody, it was an older couple, they said, well, what does SFR stand for? And my wife and I looked at each other and we were, going, we were you know, mortified, what do we say? <laughs> so we made up, you know, Surefire Red. Well, the first time we actually said, well, we named it after a relative. <laughs> and then we came up with Surefire Red. And by about the fifth couple, we said, you know, they're wine drinkers. And then we started telling them what the real name was. People loved it. They started buying it just for the name. Just alone. for the name, yeah, you know. yeah, I could see that. But uh, somewhere down the road, you ought to make a special one of these that says right on it, shift face red. <laughs> I don't think I could get government approval on no, it. No, you don't think so? I don't really think so. <laughs> but uh, it, it's been an interesting road. This is our first mm. year. We're, we're just... Uh, I like that one. You like that one too? I like that one, yeah. yeah. Again, 50% petite. Yeah. And that was the other one. Uh, the petite out here is coming out just really, really good. Yeah. yeah. You can tell. Mm -hmm. I'll have to get some of that for my wife. No. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so tell us about more like your background, where you came from and where you're going. Well, here's, here's where the illusion ends. I came from the insurance industry, uh, not from the wine industry, although I drank a hell of a lot. Well, that's kind of like that was coming my from background. the wine industry. I know. Mm -hmm. uh, I had spent about 35 and a half years with an insurance organization. I left it, I retired actually a year ago. I knew when I knew I was going to be retiring. A year ago? A year ago. A year ago, last September. Well, you've got a nice retirement here. Well, in preparation for it, like I said, I bought the property back in uh, f five years ago, getting ready for it, and uh, was able to uh, walk right into this. And I thought this was retirement. <laughs> Little did I know that I'm working today more than I've ever worked in my life. Yeah, but you're enjoying but it. But I'll tell you, I love it more than, yeah. more than anything. I can tell. It, it, it's a work of love. It's a true labor of love. And as long as I'm loving it, it's, it's not work. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Pretty cool. It is. Anything else you want to tell us about your winery? Other than uh, any time, I wish people uh, give me a call, uh, come by the tasting room, taste the wines. You said the tasting room, so, so you're not open to the public, but you have a tasting room. We do have a tasting room. Our tasting room is uh, located in downtown Paso Robles. We're at 1244 Pine Street. Our tasting room is called Wines on Pine. We're located with uh, six other wineries down in this tasting room. And we're about one block off of the main square, right off of the uh, park in downtown Paso Robles. Okay, great. All right, well, you know what? Thanks for having us today. Oh, it is my pleasure. And we're gonna take a look around, see what Please you got do. here. And I may even open that 04 uh, Petite for you. Oh, darn. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, thanks so much. We're with the wine dude, tasting as you go, over here at Gelfand Vineyards, and um, that's it. Come and join us. Wine dude here, giving you directions to Gelfand Vineyard Tasting Room. You might ask, hey wine dude, why are you giving directions to Gelfand's tasting room and not the winery itself? And that is because you have to be a Gelfand Wine Club member to visit the actual winery. That's what made this podcast so cool. Gelfand Wines can be tasted at Wines on Pine, 1244 Pine Street, Suite A, in the heart of downtown Paso Robles. Take the 101 to Paso Robles, exit Spring Road, and just go until you see a really cool park on the right. Turn right, just past the park. Go to Pine Street, make a left, park your car, it's on the right. Well, there you have it. Thanks for joining us at Gelfand Vineyard, our next official Wine Dude podcast. 
I want to thank Lynn Gelfin for his time and especially his wine. You can find Gelfin on the web at www.gelfinvineyards.com. And remember, to Lynn Gelfin, dreaming is what it takes. And let me tell you, his dreams have become reality because this guy really loves what he does and his efforts have produced some awesome wines. Check out our website at www.thewinedude.com. Get information about the wineries we visit, download our podcast, check our future episodes on some great California wineries. Also, look for the Wine Dude's Upside Down Tour podcast and book your next vacation wine tasting with the Wine Dude. And join me, the Wine Dude, tasting as you go.